I want to recognize Mr. Honda. He's a representative uh, of the Tillman family, and uh, he uh, asked me to hold this hearing. And, um, and I know he's talked to you, Mr. Tillman, and, and Mr. Tillman, but uh, I want to add, I recognize him to pursue any questions he wants to. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and um, I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and Ranking Member Davis, for and the members of this committee for holding this hearing. It is a hearing that's been long awaited, um, but it's a hearing that was set aside until such time that all administrative uh, procedures can be exhausted, and I think that the Tillmans have exercised a tremendous amount of restraint and patience. And to um, the family, I, I want to thank you for that. And also thank you for not giving up. And um, I guess there's a phrase that says you bring truth to power. I think now you will give power to truth. And this is a pursuit that we're going after. And to Ms. Lynch and to Dr. Bowles, thank you for being here also. There was a um, initial comment uh, with you, Kevin, about being there. Um, the, the situation was, as I understand it, that the platoon was set up in two serials, uh, Serial 1 where your brother was in and Serial 2 is where, where you were assigned. And the, and the the firing took place, of which you probably heard, but what did not take part in. Could you share with us um, that which happened step by step uh, through that day and then the subsequent days until such time that you had become aware that uh, your brother was killed by uh, friendly fire? Um, yes, sir. That's a long narrative, but I'll speed it up. Yeah, it may the, be um, long, but I think it we were, we were We had a broken down GMV, and we were stuck in a... In, uh, we were stuck in Magara for about six hours, and um, I'm not privy to any conversations with the PL or any of that stuff because I, I was on a turret gunner. It was a Mark 19, right. and uh, long and short of it, we had they told the PL the decision was made to split the platoon up, one go to um, to Mana, and the other take the broken down GMB up to the Hardball Road. So they took off the first serial that Pat was in left about 10 minutes before we did and then we followed suit well someone made the decision not to go up that road because it was too difficult well they traveled into a serial one traveled into a camp serial two decided to fall right behind serial into that canyon so and I actually saw the last vehicle enter into the canyon I mean I I, I didn't really know what the plan was specifically, but you get a general feel. And uh, long and short of it, we ended up following. I don't know how close, but I knew we were there. I was in the vehicle with a platoon sergeant in the in the in the rear of the element. So they went through. Pat's group went through and had no issues. We went through, and we at some point in the inside the canyon got hit. Well, as we, as the as the serial ex, you know exited the canyon. The first vehicle ended up engaging the uh, Pat, the AMF soldier, um, O'Neill, and the whole uh, that, that whole serial on the top right side, which was an entire squad in a village. Um, by the time we pulled up, it was you know it was it was all you know said and done. So we pull up, and I'm just sitting down at the bottom. So after all that stuff happens, we ended up slowly working our way through. And I found out about 45 minutes later that Pat had died, um, and they didn't tell me how. They just told me, you know, I asked them, where's Pat, because it was, and I just didn't know where he was, and I didn't think about it at all. And then I just didn't hear him, and Pat's a very, you know, you can you always know where Till is, you know. And uh, so I asked one of my uh, NCOs, I said, you know, where's Pat, and he wouldn't answer. I asked him again, and he told me. And uh, about five minutes after that, they picked Pat up in a helicopter and took him away. Then they picked me up about an hour and a half later and took me away. And uh, from that point, I was with, you know, I wasn't with Pat's body, but I was in Salerno, then Bagram, and eventually I went back with Pat's body, or I sent Pat's body uh, to Germany, then to Dover, then back to San Jose, California. And then I found out 
about a month and two days later that um, it was, in fact, fratricide that got him and it wasn't uh, the enemy. At the time of the shooting, um, when you asked what had happened, do you recall what the exact wording was that you were that they shared with you? Do you remember? It was it was very nebulous. Pat was running. Uh, he was outside by by a village. He was running up a hill, and uh, he got you know essentially got shot dead on. Um, and it made sense in my head because to the right, I mean, we were surrounded by hills, so it was real. That there wasn't a lot of specifics to it, but I didn't really you know just when that stuff happens. It's, it's tough to process a lot of that stuff anyway, so it's like, okay, and your focus is the fact that they're gone, and that's what's, that's your focus. Um, and that's, it was, it was still very general. Yeah, he was with um, O'Neill. Um, O'Neill told me he was, he was, you know, they were running up the hill and they got shot. O'Neill was told not to tell me, and uh, so I got a general. Uh, Private O'Neill was the one with Pat. He was told not to say anything as I called him, like, who was with Pat. I wanted to at least find out who was with him. I spoke with O'Neill. He told me um, generally what happened, but he eliminated pretty much everything. He just gave me a brief little synopsis, and, and that was that. Uh, I didn't press him very hard um, for whatever reason, and uh, then I found out about a month and two days later. Thank you, Mr. Honda. Mr. Mitchell? Pleased to have you with us. 